All right, you guys, this is your notes for um, the photosynthesis mini unit. We're only gonna spend two or three days on this, um, but I want you to be able to compare photosynthesis with um, cellular respiration. So before we get into photosynthesis, let's just do a quick review of what cellular respiration is. So for who does cellular respiration? All living things do um, at least a part of cellular respiration, right? Because they can do glycolysis. Um, not all living things can do parts two, three, and four. Um, what is cellular respiration? It is the breakdown of glucose into energy, which is in the form of ATP. Um, most of the energy is made if oxygen is present. Where does cellular respiration occur? Cytoplasm and the mitochondria, specifically in the matrix and in the cristae. When does cellular respiration occur? After glucose is present in cells. So glucose has to be there, right? It's required to start um, cellular respiration and glycolysis. Why does cellular respiration occur? To create ATP or energy so the cell can do work how does cellular respiration occur? Well, we're not going through that all again. Remember the four stages and um, we're good to go for that. All right. Okay. So now we're going to compare that to photosynthesis. All right. So looking at the equation for cellular respiration first, because we're going to be looking at the equation for photosynthesis, the equation for cellular respiration was C6H2O6 plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Um, and now that we learned this already, we can add to the end of that equation if we wanted to, um, that we could add 36 to 38 ATP molecules, okay? So if we were in class, or we are in class, but if we were doing lecture in class, I would have you guys brainstorm what you know about photosynthesis. So just thinking like, what, do you guys have any background information on photosynthesis? Because um, I really don't know if you do or not. Um, but you might know that photosynthesis occurs in plants. You might think of the chloroplast from our um, cell unit. All right, so we're gonna go through the who, da, the who, what, where, when, why, basically kind of thing for photosynthesis. So who does photosynthesis? All plants do photosynthesis. Algae do photosynthesis. Some bacteria actually can do photosynthesis. Um, the organisms that do photosynthesis are called producers or autotrophs. And we're gonna see that word again if we get to our ecology unit at the end of the year. Producers do photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a process similar to cellular respiration, um, but it captures light. We're gonna get the energy from light. We're not gonna get the energy from like glucose. We're gonna get the energy from the light, from the sun. And we're gonna take the energy from the sun and transform that into glucose. So we're basically doing the opposite. We're putting, we're making sugar. We're making glucose this time. So our energy from the sun will be found in glucose at the end of photosynthesis. Um, cellular respiration had four stages. Photosynthesis has two. Um, and so if you're thinking that photosynthesis and cellular respiration are kind of opposites, um, the equation should be opposite, right? So the equation for photosynthesis is going to be 6CO2 plus 6H2O yields C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Notice it is basically the cellular respiration equation flipped, okay? The opposite of cellular respiration without the ATP, of course, added. The left side of the arrow is now on the right side of the arrow, and the right side of the arrow for photosynthesis is now on the left side of the arrow for, photos, for uh, cellular respiration or whatever. It's just flipped, okay? Um, the reactants, remember, on the left side of the arrow, that's gonna be our carbon dioxide and our water. The products are on the right side of the arrow, that's gonna be our glucose and our oxygen. Okay, so those are terms that you, we've seen before. Okay, so remember, and I mentioned this in cellular respiration, that arrow is like an equal sign. So notice that each side equals the other side. So if you can't remember the equation, you can see that six carbons are on the left side and there's six carbons here on the right side, et cetera, okay? All right, where does photosynthesis occur? When we learned about cells, we did, um, we learned about the chloroplasts. And chloroplasts are green oval structures that have little hockey puck looking things or stacks of these little hockey puck things inside it. That's where photosynthesis occurs. So there's an outer membrane, just like the mitochondria, there's an inner membrane. But the inner membrane isn't squiggly. 
um, like the mitochondria was. Um, they have these little hockey puck structures called thylakoids, which are important for photosynthesis. And then kind of like the mitochondria has a matrix, the chloroplast has the inside layer of where all the enzymes and um, reactants are. That's called the stroma, okay? Um, so notice, yeah, the two membranes are gonna be involved with that electron transport chain. So we are gonna have that again happen. And these thylakoids that are stacked up are going to get the light energy. They're gonna get the energy from the sun, okay? So the more thylakoids there are, the more sun that we can absorb. The stroma, again, like I said, has the enzymes for all these chemical reactions that are going to occur for photosynthesis. Okay, when does photosynthesis occur? It's going to occur at two different times. Um, the first stage of photosynthesis is going to occur, has to occur with the light because the light is required. And so the first stage of photosynthesis is called the light reactions. So you can see on the little diagram here, you got the light right there. So the light dependent reactions occur when it is light outside, the sun has to be there. The second stage of photosynthesis does not require light. It's called the Kelvin cycle. It does not require light. So they also call it the dark reactions. Okay. All right. So big one, why is photosynthesis important? So there's a few reasons here. Um, the glucose that's made by photosynthesis is obviously required for life. It's used by plant cells and it's used by animal cells for energy. So we need to make that glucose so that we can do cellular respiration. Um, in photosynthesis, it's important because it's gonna produce oxygen, which is important for our um, atmosphere, obviously, um, for aerobic respiration, for aerobic organisms to survive. Um, the oxygen is required for like I said, aerobic organisms and photosynthesis gets rid of the carbon dioxide that's in our atmosphere that we create from cellular respiration. So that's nice. Um, so nearly all organisms on earth will depend on photosynthesis. Okay, how does photosynthesis work? So here we go. We're not going to go into, I mean, we're going to get, you're going to get the details for it, but obviously you're not taking a test on this. You'll, you need to be able to compare photosynthesis with respiration. Okay. So on the left, you've seen this before. This is showing ATP being broken down into ADP. Taking that third phosphate off creates energy or provides energy for the cell, okay? So for photosynthesis, there's two stages, the light dependent reactions and the dark reactions. The dark reactions are light independent, which means light is not required. Um, and they also call that the Kelvin cycle. The Kelvin cycle isn't as complex as the Krebs cycle. So that's a good thing to, to know um, about ATP. ATP is going to be made just like in cellular respiration, but it's also going to be used as well in, in this because we need to build glucose. So we need, to, we need to invest ATP in order to get those covalent bonds together, okay? NADPH, oh, it looks a little bit different. It's not NADH, it's NADPH. It's super similar. It just has a phosphate group added to it. Um, NADPH is going to be made and NADPH is going to be used in photosynthesis. Um, like I said, it's very similar to NADH, but it has a phosphate group attached to it. I don't even think I gave you the structure. Yeah, you don't need to see it. All right, so here we go. Stage one is the light dependent stage where light is required. It is going to take place in the thylakoids. Okay, so these hockey puck looking structures that are inside the stroma of a chloroplast. The main function is that these thylakoids is to capture the light and transfer that energy, okay? There's actually six, six steps to stage one. All right, step number one, energy is gonna be absorbed from the sunlight into the thylakoid of the chloroplast. Step number two, as soon as that sunlight hits that leaf, you're thinking of a leaf, right? And we're gonna do an exercise on that looking at a leaf, um, water molecules that are in the leaf, because you water your plants, those water molecules are actually going to split. So if you take H2O and you break it apart, you're going to get oxygen, you're going to get protons and electrons, okay? These electrons can be excited and these protons can move around and then oxygen obviously leaves the leaf and that's what we're breathing in right now. 
So oxygen gets released, released out of, into the atmosphere. The protons are gonna stay inside the thylakoid for now. Okay, they will be moving and through um, you, know, you know that electron transport chain and that proton pump that we talked about in cellular respiration, the same thing is going to happen with those protons eventually. Um, and the electrons get high energy from the sun. So the sun's energy now is in an electron. And that electron came from water, all right? Step number three, here we go. The protons that are in the thylakoid are gonna get pumped across the thylakoid membrane. So through that um, protein on the phospholipid bilayer in the thylakoid membrane, and they're gonna be, there's gonna be a buildup of them. Just like in cellular respiration, it's gonna have the stored energy. The electrons are gonna move. So the protons are doing that. The electrons are bouncing around in the um, electron transport chain. The energy from the electrons gets transferred to ATP. So now the electron has low energy, okay? So here's your picture of what we just talked about. Here is sunlight. These photons of light, which are just little packets of this light energy, goes to um, a chloroplast, which has thylakoids. That's going to split our water into its pieces. We're gonna get oxygen, protons, and electrons. These electrons are going to go to a higher energy state. They're going to go down the electron transport chain and the protons are gonna be involved, which this diagram's not showing, but we're going to make ATP, okay? Through that ATP synthase, that's still happening there, all right? All right, moving on. Step number four. So now that we have an electron that doesn't have any energy, it has low energy, it's going to go and get sunlight again. So the sunlight is basically involved twice. Energy is gonna be absorbed by the sunlight again into the thylakoid, giving those electrons energy again. Okay, water is not splitting. We still have the same electrons from the water. NADP, which is already there in the chloroplast, is going to accept those high energy electrons and make NADPH, which is a, similar to NADH. It's an energy carrying molecule. All right. Step number six, these hydrogen ions, these protons that we talked about in cellular respiration are again going to diffuse through the thylakoid membrane into through ATP synthase and ATP will be made, okay? All right, which we already talked about actually. So step one, we have the sunlight, we went through the electron transport chain and we made ATP. Step two, the sunlight hits the thylakoids again. Our electrons there are there, go up to a higher energy level and now we're gonna have, end up making NADPH. So in the first part of stage one, we make ATP, and the second part of stage one, we make NADPH, all right? So here's our summary. What is required? Water, because we need water to split to provide for the protons and the electrons. That's where they come from. We need ADP, we need NADP+, and we need chlorophyll, okay? We need chlorophyll because chlorophyll is what's going to absorb that light into that thylakoid. That's where the chlorophyll is located at, is in that thylakoid. Our products are oxygen. We re it's a byproduct. It's not important, actually. Um, we made ATP and we made NADPH. We did not make glucose, but now we have the energy right here to make glucose in the second part of photosynthesis, okay? And that's what this says. So now we have ATP and NADPH energy. Now we can go on to the light independent phase, which is called the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions. Light is not required. Okay, so this can happen all day long at night, whatever. These reactions can take place anytime the energy of ATP and NADPH are available. Energy is needed for the Calvin cycle because we have to make glucose and we have those covalent bonds that we have to put together we need energy to do that, okay? There's four steps to the dark reactions. Step number one, carbon dioxide is added to a five carbon molecule that's already in the cycle, kind of like oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate was already in the Krebs cycle. So if we have carbon dioxide, it's one carbon, we add it to a five carbon molecule, we end up with a six carbon molecule, okay? You don't even need to know the names of these things, all right? The six carbon molecule is gonna split into two, so now we're gonna have two three carbon molecules. ATP and NADPH are gonna provide the energy to rearrange them 
into these three carbon molecules, okay? So we already had to use a little bit of ATP and NADPH at this point. One of the three carbon molecules is going to leave the cycle and the other one is gonna stay. Once there is two three carbon molecules out of the cycle, then we have a glucose molecule, okay? The three carbon molecule that stays back in the cycle just transfers back to the original five carbon molecule, all right? So really, it's kind of inefficient, um, but this transfer requires ATP. So ATP and NADPH are required to make that glucose and to transfer that three carbon molecule back into the cycle. So the plant has to use that ATP for that. All right, here's a picture of it. It's super complicated. Um, you don't need to know any of these names of these molecules, but here's our carbon dioxide that comes in. Here's our five carbon molecule. Five carbons plus one carbon equals a six carbon molecule that's not even shown on here because it splits right away into a three carbon molecule. And then using ATP and using NADPH, we're going to rearrange the molecules. One of these molecules will go and make glucose after we have two of them. The other one will get transferred back so that we can continue the cycle again, okay? This Calvin cycle is the, the second stage of photosynthesis is occurring in the stroma of the chloroplast, okay? All right, so our summary is we require ATP, we require NADPH, and we require carbon dioxide. Our product is glucose. I mean, I guess you could say ADP and NADPA. P plus could also be a product. I didn't list that on there, but I should. So please add um, ADP, right? If ATP breaks down, your second product would be ADP and NADPH would turn into NADP plus. All right, and that basically finishes the notes. One thing that we're gonna be looking at next week is what a leaf and the inside of a leaf and how this all works, but also what work we wanna compare. We want to compare photosynthesis with cellular respiration. What are, these are things I want you to think about. You don't have to answer these right now, but you will be eventually. What are the similarities between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? And what are the differences between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? There's a lot of different answers for both of those questions. Okay? All right. Thank you.